first off, just wanted to say how grateful we've been to get to work with uh, UWC over the course of the last few months. Before the world changed, uh, a few team members and I had the opportunity to meet with some of the folks on this call at UWC USA in New Mexico and to really see firsthand the power of this organization uh, and the immense amount of support and uh, and opportunity that you provide to the young people that you work with every day. Uh, we're just immensely grateful to have partners like you. Uh, and you know, thanks especially to Victoria and to the panelists for joining this and, and sharing some of your own journey. Um, so my name is Cassie Crockett. I'm the head of strategy at Schmidt Futures. Uh, we're a philanthropic initiative founded by Eric and Wendy Schmidt. And our mission is to find exceptional people and help them do more for other people. Uh, Last November, Eric and Wendy made a $1 billion commitment to advancing talent through their philanthropy. And at the same time, they announced uh, the anchor program of that commitment, which is RISE. Uh, and what I'm here to talk with all of you about today is both some of the details about RISE, uh, where the program's coming from, where it's going, how we're working with UWC, and also I will warn all of you in advance that I have an ask for every person on this call uh, by the end, because we understand that we can't do this alone and we need your help. So uh, a, a little bit about uh, Arise. So as I said at Schmidt Futures, our goal is to find brilliant young, or to find brilliant people and help them use their talents for good and for other people. And Rise is the earliest age group that we've ever worked with in the context of that thesis. So RISE is looking for brilliant 15 to 17 year olds around the world and is hoping to support them over the course of their lives as they serve other people. We're very fortunate that we've been working with our colleagues at the Rhodes Trust. And I see that Peter Anderson is on right now, who's been one of our uh, day one uh, partners in crime on this. And, uh, and you know, we're very excited that as of this week, we have formally launched the first round of applications for RISE globally. So why 15 to 17? There are a couple of reasons that we were really excited about focusing on this age group. And my guess is that everyone on this call will resonate with this in some way. First off, even though nothing is universal around the world, 15 to 17 is pretty close to a universal inflection point for a lot of young people. It represents a moment when lots of young people are thinking about what the next step in their educational journey could look like, or possibly what the next step in their family or work journey could look like. It represents this moment where with the right type of support, you could end up with amplified effect down the line. And second, I think as we look at today's 15 to 17 year olds in particular, we see a younger generation that's deeply oriented towards service. There are examples of this orientation every time you turn on the news, ranging from climate marches that mobilized millions of young people around the world over the last two years to in the United States, the March for Our Lives uh, that sort of represented young people demanding a stake in their own safety in the context of their education. So we're very excited about that age group. And we also recognize that in that age group, you start to see a lot of the traits that we're looking for in folks that could change the world over the course of their life. You see brilliance, you see empathy, you see integrity, you see perseverance, you see people with a, a calling for how they wanna change the world. And all of those traits are traits that we want to reward as we think about how to build out a program that can find and support 15 to 17 year olds over the course of their lives. So we're looking for this generation. We know that this generation is already oriented towards service. What are we gonna do with RISE specifically? So here's how all of this is gonna play over the next year or so. Uh, next summer, we will announce the first cohort of 100 RISE global winners. Uh, those winners can receive a lifetime of support as they work in service of other people. In the near term, that could, could include resources like scholarship funding, a laptop and another tech package, opportunities like career coaching and internship support, membership in a community, the ability to come together and meet. Uh, but in the long term, we really want to be flexible and personalized with how we support these kids that we meet every year. Uh, you could imagine that 10 years down the road, when one of them wants to start a social enterprise, they could need a first seed funder. They could need someone to be the first bet on their idea. And when that happens, we want to be there to meet them at that moment. Uh, another core principle we had is that 
even though those 100 people at the end of the process that we'll announce next summer uh, will be working with us over the course of their lives, it was really important to us that everyone that applied a rise leave better off as a result of having applied so that you don't end up with this binary outcome of who is in and who is out at the end of the process. So we've been working to design an application process where everybody is uh, everybody gets something as a result of even participating. That could mean access to free online learning resources that we've been working with experts around the world to develop, links to other opportunities that could be a good fit for someone, uh, and membership in the global community that is still nascent but that we're hoping we can build in the course of the coming years. Uh, the biggest challenge for us early on is we said, okay, we know that we care about this age group, we would know we want to support them over the course of their lives. We know that we want to make sure that everyone can leave this process a winner in some way. How do we actually find these people? And that is where our conversations with UWC really started coming in. We knew from early on that we would be completely dependent on partners around the world that share our mission and our values and that treasure the potential that this age demographic shows. Uh, and we first began speaking with United World Colleges back in 2019. And we're very excited to sort of find a pathway forward to work together uh, in the months that followed that. From our perspective, UWC was exactly the type of partner that we knew that we needed. There was this beautiful values alignment uh, off the bat where you know we all believe in the ability to build a more unified world by supporting young people at this particular age. There's also a shared understanding between our organizations that Talent is absolutely everywhere. Uh, it's an abundant resource. The problem is that the support that flows to that talent is not as abundant as that talent itself. Uh, and I think we share a mission of uh, ensuring that young people around the world can get, a, can get a leg up as they think about where they wanna go. So we're absolutely delighted to be working with UWC, you know, first to launch an education program uh, at a refugee camp in Kenya that will provide foundational educational opportunities alongside Amala and loved to see in the chat that uh, the founder of Amala was Zahina Zir at, at UWC, which is wonderful. Um, and second, we're, we're honored to support 15 UWC scholarships in the coming years, uh, particularly for young people with a migrant background, uh, having had the opportunity to see firsthand uh, the passion that young people on campus feel for UWC and the degree to which it can change lives, we are you know, honored to be able to support that type of work and, uh, and can't wait to meet some of the young people that, that will be able to come in that way. Um, we've also, and this was sort of outside the bounds of what we'd initially talked about, but we've been really grateful to work with Amala to pilot a paper-based application approach because we know that not all kids will have access to technology. And UWC has been a, a thought partner for us from very early days to think about, gosh, if you're trying to get paper in, in someone's hand, what does it take to actually physically do that? And how can you do that in an equitable and fair way? Um, our partnership with UWC, we think has the potential to go far beyond the pieces of work that we're doing right now. And we're very grateful for the opportunity to learn from this entire institution and the young people that it serves in the years to come. But I said, I promised that I would close with an ask for help. Um, if you're watching this or listening to this and you're gonna be between 15 and 17 next July, please apply to RISE. Even if you think it might not be a good fit, even if you're not sure that you'll qualify, please apply to RISE because um, we really care that all young people have access to the opportunities that we're trying to pull into this platform. And we really care that it not be a, a winners and losers mindset. We hope that everyone will leave the process better off than they came in. If you are not between 15 and 17, and I know a lot of people on this call are not between 15 and 17, but you know someone who is, or you know someone who knows someone who is, um, please nominate them to apply to RISE. We have nomination forms, we have referral forms that kids can use for bringing their peers into the program. We've really tried to make it as easy as possible to pull people in, and uh, we need your help to actually do it. So. For more information, you can visit our website at riseforthe.world.org. You can download our app, the Hello World Rise app. Um, and we're very grateful for your help because we know that we can't take this journey alone. And we know that we have an immense amount of learning that we can do, uh, both from UWC, but also from all of the young people that you serve. 
and we're excited to be able to get this journey started. Um, so with that, I will be quiet because I think we're all more interested in hearing from the young people uh, and from the panel than we are from me. Uh, but just again, very grateful for all of your partnership and support. And we feel very lucky to be a part of this broader UWC family. Thank you, Cassie. Um, it's super exciting for sure. Um, I think both Mia and Polly, the founders of uh, uh, Amala are on this call. So hi, Mia and Polly. <laughs> Hello, thank you for all that you're doing. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Do spread the word. You can find out more at riseforthworld.org.